Warning, this video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1037. You've been warned. Hello, my Nakamotachi, this is Joy Girl, and today I want to discuss the elephant in the room. Or elephant at sea. You guys know what I'm talking about, let's talk about Zanisha. Now this is a speculation that I've held for quite a while now and I have brought it up before in the past but I didn't get the chance to fully flesh it out. And so now I thought that this would be a good opportunity to do so obviously because of the fact that Zanisha has become a hot topic recently and obviously that's a result of chapter 1037 because we saw in the final panels we saw Zanisha or at least her shadowy silhouette coming to Wano you know joining the raid. But speaking of shadow and speaking of raid this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a free-to-play game that you can download yourself using my links below and I'm still having so much fun trying to fight the new clan boss Hydra. The ultimate beast with six heads, each one having unique mechanics to terrorize your champions. I mean, how terrifying does he look? The graphics and the designs of all their characters and settings is something that I really enjoy about this game. It really allows you to immerse yourself in the land of Teleria because it also just so happens that this month, alongside releasing a bunch of new champions, Raids also introduced a brand new faction walls crypt for one of my favorite factions, the Shadowkin. And I can't wait for the crypt to open up so that I can dive right into it. There are also tons of new year events and tournaments, including a special fusion event where you can get one of Raids newest legendary champions. So now's the time for you to start playing Raid. And if you use my links in the description box below or scan my QR code, you'll get a free start a pack worth around $30 to kickstart your game. We're talking a free champion, Virgus, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard so that you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All of this treasure will be waiting for you here and only for the next 30 days for new players, so make sure that you don't miss out. And that's it. Click the link, join the game, and I'll see you in Raid Shadow Legends. Alright, so now let's go back to a different raid. Now, Zunisha showing up at Wano has meant that she's become the source of so much speculations and discussions, and whilst that has largely centered around the mystery of the devil fruit, the special devil fruit that the Gorosei were talking about, the idea that I actually want to share in this video centers around another mystery in the One Piece world. Now, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with and remember Ohara's theory video that blew up the fan base last year. And if you guys aren't one of the literally millions of people who watched that video, Ohara made a video with the Japanese YouTuber Yudoron, and that video largely centered around the possibility of Ennis Lobby being the missing right eye of Jaya. Now, they go into some really fun details into the Japanese language and the puns that could be made between the chapter numbers and the chapter titles. So if you haven't watch that then I do highly recommend you do but I have to say that when I actually first watched that video it really lined up quite nicely with an idea that I've always had about the missing eye of Jaya except it wasn't any slobby because when I had always looked at that skull map of Jaya and pondered about the possibility of there also being a right eye given that Shandora was Jaya's left eye I'd always thought that that missing piece could be Zoe which is obviously being carried by Zunisha as the Mokomo kingdom so soon after Hara's video came out, we actually did a stream with him. We did a Let's Talk Wano collab. And so for those of you guys who watched that stream, you guys might remember that I did actually bring up this, this speculation, but I didn't get to flesh it out in full detail. And so I thought that now that Zunisha has become such a hot topic and the source of so much intrigue, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to share my thoughts. So hear me out. I don't think that Zunisha is originally from the new world. Or even if she is, I think there has to be a a huge link between her and Sky Island. And one of the reasons why I say that is because it was once revealed that Zunisha's diet consists of giant seaweed and Sky Island apples. Now the giant seaweed makes sense. We see Zunisha reach down into the water, you know, feed herself and also give water to fertilize Zoe. But the Sky Island apples, that is, I think, oddly specific. And obviously, given the fact that we are talking about the missing piece of Jaya, which has obvious connections to Sky Island because of the knock-up stream that shut up Jaya's left eye, I think a clear connection can be then made to Zunisha as well. And the thing is, is that the more I actually looked into the connection between Zunisha and Sky Island or Shandora or Jaya, the more I looked, 
the more possible clues I could find. Something else that seems to really connect Zoe or at least the Minx to Sky Island is the heavy symbolism of the moon. Now, obviously the Minx transform into their Sulong forms with the full moon, whereas the Shandorians, along with the other Sky Island races, we know are races that originated from the moon through a Nell's cover story. Now, I know that the moon could also work well with some other islands and some other races, other elements in One Piece as well. With Wano, for example, there is obviously a heavy moon symbol in the Wano arc. And actually that would really pose some fun ideas because we also have the mountain god Bors in Wano. And then looking at Zunisha, we could maybe theorize on the mega fauna that, you know, used to possibly roam the One Piece world. But anyways, if we're looking at clues that link Zunisha and the Mokomo kingdom to Skypiea or to the Sky Islands directly and specifically, we've actually also got some humans who look quite similar to Minx. And by this, I'm talking about Masira and Shoju, who we met in Jaya, and they were the ones that helped Luffy get to Sky Island. Now, they are known to be humans, but I've always thought that they have quite ape-like animalistic characteristics and almost as if they could be minx themselves. And so with all of these clues that seem to connect Zunisha and Zo to Jaya and Shandora, I think it's possible that Zo is the missing right eye of Jaya. For one, we know that Shandora was built Around 1100 years ago, Robin revealed this as she was reading the Poneglyphs back in chapter 261. And then it's only natural to assume that if Shandora was Jaya's missing left eye and such an eye existed, then there would also be a right eye. So then, if Jaya was a complete skull and had a right eye, then that island which made up that right eye, that piece, would also have to be around 1100 years old. And so interestingly, one of the only islands that we know to have that length of history happens to be Zo. In chapter 802, Law says that the civilization at Zo has existed for around a thousand years. And I think this is an important point because I imagine that there are only a very few civilizations that has existed for such a long time, has existed for over 800 years. And the reason why I say that is because all of the other countries, all of the other islands must only have a history of around 800 years that is when the new kingdoms were formed as a result of the 20 kingdoms who existed before then going up to form the world government, going to Marijuana. And that's when the new kingdoms had to form instead. So that rough timeline of a thousand years or a thousand one hundred years matches quite nicely between Zo and between Shandora, which I think could be quite suggestive. And another big potential clue or a big reason why I actually think this is that when you look at the map of Jaya, when you look at that skull, not only is there that missing left eye where Shandora was, but when you look at that right eye, it doesn't look the same as the left. It's not just a hole. It doesn't look like the one on the left, which has obviously been catapulted upwards, or even as Ohara mentioned in his video about Ennis Lobby being pulled downwards. Because what it looks like from the map is that it actually got torn out from the side. It looks like it's been torn out from the right. It seems like if there was a right eye and it was taken away, it was different to what happened with Shandora and the knock-up stream because it looks like it's been ripped away from the side. And so then if that's the case, I think there are a few ways we could think about how that could happen. One of them could be Oars. We know that there was the existence of an ancient giant race and Oars was actually literally known as the continent puller. So an ancient giant like Oars, maybe Oars himself, could have pulled away the eye. But the other option is of course Zunisha. Given the fact that Zunisha is a huge ginormous elephant, ginormous creature, but also an ancient creature and currently has Zo on her back, the way that I could pick it is if Zunisha went underwater, mounted the island, mounted that piece of the eye on her back, and then walked away and ripped off ripped off the island with her. And at first I have to admit that seemed quite fanciful for me, the idea of Zunisha going underwater, thought might have been a bit wild, especially given how large she is. But then an interesting fact that I found out is that elephants are natural born swimmers. I never would have thought that elephants swim, so that was really cool for me to find out. But then I think that also adds credence to the fact that Zunisha could have gone underwater 
to mount the island before ripping it off. We know that Oda likes to draw on real life events and real world facts, of course, unless it comes to his uh, paleontology. But apart from that, the fact that elephants can swim, they can go underwater, I don't know, I think adds to the speculation a little bit. So then the remaining mystery and the very intriguing question is why Zunisha is carrying Zo? Where is Zunisha going? What was her punishment? What is she being sentenced for? What crime did she commit? Because Miyagi did heavily suggest that Zunisha isn't just walking around aimlessly and she is actually walking towards a destination and this is an atonement for some sort of crime. And now obviously with chapter 1037 we've seen that Zunisha has come to Wano but I'm less inclined to believe that Wano has always been her original destination. I personally think it's less likely that Wano is the place that she's been searching for all of these years and it's more likely that she's come maybe because of something that Momo said or maybe because of the voice of all things by Momo or Luffy. Maybe Luffy calling out to Zunisha when he fell off on Nigashima earlier in the raid when he fell off the rooftop during his fight with Kaido. So then in that case, if Wano hasn't always been her original destination and it's merely a new stop or a stop along the way, then I think it's possible that her true destination is Jaya. Maybe to return the Minx to their homeland. Because Miyagi also did say that the Minx wouldn't be able to stay on on Zunisha on Zunisha's back forever and that one day that they would return to their homeland. So is that place of origin Jaya and is that where Zunisha has been going? Because in that case we would go back to what I originally said that it doesn't seem like Zunisha has always been in the new world and I could picture a similar scenario to Laboon who can't go past the reverse mountain where Zunisha has just not been able to go through the red line. But this is sort of the idea that I've had about Zunisha, about the links between Minx and and Chandora about how this all fits in with the missing right eye of Jaya and the bigger speculations about what happened before the void century during the void century and I'm glad that I finally got the chance to share this with you guys now that Zunisha has risen as a hot topic but I'd be interested in reading what you guys have to say on the topic so please do leave a comment below don't forget to like and share the video please do subscribe for more One Piece discussions you can always join our Joy Fleet Discord server or even become a Patreon member and I do want to thank all my Patreons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.